ready? Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's mm -hmm. Common Council meeting. Before we start our meeting, we'll ask our city clerk to read the quote for the week. Thank you, Mayor. Adversity is a fact of life. It cannot be controlled. What we can control is how we react to it. Thank you, Madam City Clerk. Call the sixth regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Would you please call the roll? Boren? Here. Bauk? Here. Serta? Here. Gisha? Here. Hannah? Here. Heidemann? Here. Kittleson? Here. Kleunis? Here. Manny? Here. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Rinfleisch? Here. Ryan? Here. Vanderweel? Excuse. Verhasselt? Here. Ann Wangeman? Here. Fifteen present. Quorum is present. This time we'll play, we'll, uh, Cite the Pledge of Allegiance. Alderman Heidemann, would you please lead us, sir? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Heidemann. Next item is approval of the minutes. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would make a motion to approve the <clears throat> minutes from the previous council meeting. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes are approved. Next item is a letter from the finance director, treasurer, off offering an extension for of his services, of his of his retirement date. Sorry about that, Rich. I should keep him on. There's a letter from Mr. Gebhardt asking for an extension. He has graciously agreed to uh, serve six more weeks. As, uh, as you will recall, his, the end date for his retirement uh, letter was on in two weeks from now, the 29th, I believe. And this letter is dated June 14th and is asking for an extension uh, to August 10th, 2007. They will give us an additional six weeks. The interviewing process, uh, the uh, application process is on track. We've had, uh, I think, about 10 or 11 applications so far. Not a tremendous uh, amount of uh, response, but nonetheless uh, a response. We're hoping to uh, do a little bit more different things in the next two or three weeks so we can get some, some more people uh, applying for the job. It's not an easy position to apply for. The requirements, as you know, are, are not easy to, to, to meet. Uh, Richard has left uh, some big shoes to fill. So we, we thank you for graciously agreeing to help us out, uh, Richard, for the next six weeks. And I would ask that uh, council approve his letter. So in that light, I would ask for a motion to approve. So moved. There's a motion and a second to approve the extension. Any discussion? There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Next item is public forum. <laughs> Madam City Clerk. Uh, yes, we have Ernest Kepler. Mr. Kepler, can I have your home address, please? Uh, 2533 Lakeshore Drive, City of Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. I'm here tonight representing the Sheboygan County Taxpayers Alliance. And good evening to you. The uh, Sheboygan County Taxpayers Alliance is once again presenting to the City of Sheboygan's Mayor and Common Council its annual proposal for action. The full report is presented in outline form for your convenience. Time allows me only to read our executive summary. In continued pursuit of fiscal responsibility with accountability, Sheboygan County Taxpayers Alliance is requesting the Common Council of the City of Sheboygan to demonstrate execution of improved efficiency while reducing costs and maintaining an acceptable level of services that are affordable to the taxpayers. For this reason, we submit the following to you for your consideration and positive action. Technology computer systems. We ask that the Common Council support the recommendation of the company that has been hired by the city to review the systems and software presently used by city departments. Install a citywide uniform software package, an electronic voting board to be used by aldermen during Common Council meetings, and provide laptop computers for the aldermen linked to the new citywide system. TIF districts. 
pay off the existing debt on present TIF districts. No more extensions of time to pay off these TIF districts and no new districts to be created until present districts are paid off. Outsourcing privatization. Outsource services when and where possible. Currently, these city services are competing with local private enterprise. This will result in a cost savings to the taxpayers. Use part-time employees. Higher part-time employees will be scheduled to work less than 600 hours per year, thus avoiding costly benefits. Hire seasonal employment to be used only when needed. Budget property taxes. A no increased budget in the tax rate was okay for 2007, but not good enough for the future. We propose a minimum of 15% reduction in spending each year for the next two years. Reduce and control wages and benefits. The sale of city-owned land and TIF district expiration tax income should not be components to maintain the status quo. Added income from land sales, TIF district expiration, pending income from the ambulance service should be used to hold the line on and further reduce taxes. Expand shared services. Explore the possibility of creating a countywide library system which will result in substantial savings to the taxpayers. Implement a countywide joint dispatch system with the county. Business plan. It is time to develop a comprehensive business plan that includes a vision for the city. Once developed and implemented, this must be continuously reviewed on a timely basis. Address the $8 million motor vehicle fund. The Common Council needs to establish the proper level of funding for the motor vehicle fund and reduce funding levels in the yearly operating budget designated for the motor vehicle fund. Detailed and best use of the excess funds should be made in a public open meeting. Address the employee pension plan obligation. The level of the obligation to the state is now at $12 million, plus an annual 7.8% delinquent interest rate. The school district and the county address their obligations. Why has the city not done so? Residency requirement for all city employees. Over 42% of all city employees live outside the city. 52% of police and fire department personnel live outside the city. Earning any money in from the city while not supporting the cost of running the city is just plain wrong. These employees continue to push for higher wages and benefits that must be paid by city taxpayers, while their property taxes are not affected since they live outside the city and enjoy lower taxes than those paid by city residents. The demographics of the city are not reflected in the city's employment. City residents are being denied employment to these higher paying city jobs currently held by out-of-towners. Restructuring of city government. SCTA supports the philosophy of restructuring our city government to save taxpayer dollars. However, this should not be a short-term effort. This should be an ongoing function. Search for efficiency improvements should never rest. Review the structure of the executive branch of city government. Create an unbiased committee with public input to study in depth the advantages and disadvantages of changing the city of Sheboygan from an elected mayor form of executive to a city manager administrator form of government. Recommendations from this committee should be presented to the taxpayers with a final decision made by voter ref binding referendum. We also recommend reducing the size of the Common Council from 16 to 12 aldermen. In conclusion, we request that the aldermen address these issues presented at this session of Common Council in a positive way to improve the quality of life of the taxpayers of the City of Sheboygan. If there are any questions, feel free to contact myself or any member of the SCTA. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> That's it. Thank you very much. Moving along the agenda, the next item is a hearing to amend the text of the zoning ordinance to change the notifi notification for a public hearing on designation of historic structures and historic sites from owners of property within 200 feet of boundary to owners within 100 feet of the boundaries. Is there anyone that would like to address the council? Is there anyone that would like to address the council? Is there anyone that would like to address the council? President Hanna. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to close the hearing. Second. Motion and second to close hearings. Under discussion. There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Hearing is closed. Next item is consent agenda. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I would uh, move to accept and adopt all RCs accept and file all ROs, put all resolutions and substitute resolutions upon his passage. Second. Motion and second. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. 
I would like to pull forward uh, document 620 for discussion. Merely discussion, it's not going to change any voting, but. Okay, please do. Uh, under license number 2458, about three quarters of the way down the first page, uh, Mr. Soul Mexican Restaurant, located at 1301 Michigan Avenue, uh, for Lorinda Perez agent. This came before our last lawn licensing committee, and after about a half hour discussion, uh, the Committee on Law and Licensing agreed to uh, grant this license. However, uh, granting this license came after a half hour discussion uh, on advisement from the Assistant City Attorney. And the reason we did this is because had we, had we voted to, or had we voted to not grant the license or not do anything, we would have, uh, the Law and Licensing Committee and ultimately the, the council uh, would have been faced with a quasi-judicial hearing which potentially could have cost the city hundreds of dollars in legal counsel to hire out, outside legal counsel to, to uh, represent the city. So as I said, after a long discussion, we unanimously dis decided to uh, grant the license. Now you may recall that this was the license a couple, a couple of weeks ago during our emergency council meeting where the council also took another look at this and decided to grant uh, Ms. Perez a liquor license. The next day, city clerk Richards received a phone call from the Wisconsin Department of Revenue saying that she could not grant the license because of an out, outstanding tax liability of Ms. Perez that goes into several, several thousands of dollars and that in order for her to obtain a license uh, from the city of Sheboygan, she would have to pay the state of Wisconsin this outstanding tax liability. So with everything considered and with this tax liability hanging over her head, uh, we decided to go ahead and approve the license. Now, it's my understanding, and maybe Madam City Clerk, you can correct me if I'm wrong, that she will have until June 30th to come up with the several thousand dollars to the Department of Revenue. And also, this will also affect her current beer and wine license, which also is set to run out at the end of the month. So potentially, uh, if Ms. Perez does not make good on this tax liability to the state of Wisconsin, she not only will not have a liquor license, she will not have any license. So we just felt that under the circumstances, this was the best way to proceed and again, we did not want the city to potentially incur hundreds of dollars in legal expenses. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren. It was a special meeting, not an emergency meeting. Special. President Hanna. Thank you. I, I think I have a question uh, for the city clerk. Is it common practice uh, for us to contact the state with regard to state tax liens as licenses come in for our approval? Uh, no, Alderman Hanna, it's not common for us to do that they contact us okay. they step in around this time of the year during the licensing period right towards the end happens every year we have anywhere from three to seven people that get into the situation for the most part they can clear it up before the end of june they send us a letter they call us and say you are not allowed to issue so once they step in we are not allowed to do anything until they clear it for us Great. Thank so you we will much. hold it thank you alderman marine flesh <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, to clarify the status of the license, what was voted on in the special license was the 2006 license that expires now in June 30th, 2007. The license that's before us that we have approved is actually next year's license, is that correct? Yes. Okay, and the status then for, for next year's license is it's issued in her name, but she's not able to pick it up until the state releases her. Actually, it is, the correct wording is, the council is, would be granting the license. Okay. Issuing happens out of my office. Okay. I would not issue the I actually physically hand it to a person It's been granted but not issued and okay. will not be issued until this is cleared and that could be conceivably within that six months time frame that we have to uh, Take a license back for non-usage. Is that correct? Right. We have an ordinance in place an inactivity ordinance so that if a license 
goes for six months without activity, the, the council has the right to step in and take the license back. Oh, yeah. So she would be in that period. So the status of the license is unless she pays, it is unused for That's the correct. next six months for, and cannot be used for any other business establishment that may no, want to expand or, or use that right now. Right. Uh, and again, while I was not necessarily comfortable with that initially, if you look at the minutes, I did move to uh, deny that license. Uh, unfortunately, though, it puts a situation of having then to hire legal help on our behalf. So um, that is why we unanimously approved uh, the motion to, to grant the license, even though it will be unused until such, such point in time that the state tells us that she has paid off her debts. Thank you, Alderman Rentleis. Alderman Wagner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I believe uh, Chairman Bourne, she does not hold a valid uh, seller's permit as well, which is another complication in this whole uh, deal. So her actually being in business of any kind right now is probably illegal. And I, I think the police department was going to look into that, as I recall. Thank you, Alderman Wang. Vice President Board. Thank you, Your Honor. That's correct, Alderman Wangman. Thank you. Any further comments? And just to double check, Vice President Boren, you did not want a separate vote. OK. So we've got consent agenda item 6-1 through 626 to be called upon a vote. There is no more discussion. Please call the roll. Bauk? Aye. Serta? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Kleinis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Ann Boren? Aye. 15. Eyes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions to be referred. Report of Officers 2, 628 by the City Clerk submitting a communication from Jerry Doyle, Sheboygan Neighborhood Association member, com commending Alderman Bob Ryan for his leadership and support during the neighborhood cleanup in his district and encouraging all older persons to support the efforts of the organization when they come into their district for a cleanup day. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would make a motion to accept and file. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Alderman Bauk. Thank you, Your Honor. I just want to commend uh, Alderman Ryan for his efforts in leadership uh, in District 2 there. They, uh, they took a neighborhood that needs a lot of help and, uh, and made it look great. So, thank, thank you. you. Alderman Bauk. And thank you, Alderman Ryan. Any further discussion? Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, actually, this took me by surprise. I didn't see this until I was reviewing my documents today, but I played a very small role in this neighborhood cleanup. Um, actually, Alderman Bauk was kind enough to donate some Johnsonville meat, and Larry from Larry, Larry's High Low Bakery donated the buns. Uh, my wife was kind enough to run around and uh, somehow find donations of soda and candy for the kids. And uh, there were, the entire neighborhood came together uh, to make this happen. I was a very small part of it, and uh, it was a good thing. And I think everybody uh, took a, a mix of people from all different walks of life and put everybody together, and it was a, it was a nice day. So thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Any further discussion, comments? There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 629 and 630 lies over to July 2nd. 631 lies over to July 16th, 6.32 through 6.44 to be referred, 6.45 by Alderman Ryan approving the terms and conditions of the contract for, set, for sale of land for private redevelopment by and between the Redevelopment Authority and Sheboygan GSRS LLC for the Grand Stay Hotel project. Alderman Ryan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move for suspension of the rules. Second. There's a motion and a second to suspend. Is there any objection? There is none. Please proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. I move for uh, uh, I move for uh, that the uh, resolution be put upon its passage. Motion second. and second under discussion. Uh, Your Honor, the reason for suspension here is uh, and for it, uh, uh, rushing this through per se is that the Grand State people can get to work on this project. We've had uh, several stumbling blocks that we've run into with originally approving it down at South Pier and then facing opposition there. And this is a good thing for the city. It's going to add over $100,000 a year to the city tax rolls when this is completed. So that's why we're moving quickly that they can get started. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you, Alderman. Ryan. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. This is a question for uh, City Attorney McLean. 
I know I notice under the uh, development agreement under contingencies is we have that Bonton stores uh, access to the rights of that that parking lot over there. Is there any kind of a deadline that we can impose upon them? I know, I know. In fact, I think I saw it in the paper that there have been several contacts to the Bonton stores, and so far, unless something happened today, they haven't contacted us back yet. Uh, I, yeah, I want to get rolling on this on this development also. So this is one of the major hang-ups. Is there any any deadline we can impose on them for a response? Terry McLean, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I would say it would be difficult to do, Alderman Warren. Uh, we're operating under current parking agreement that is in place uh, as long as the Anchor store continues to operate there uh, as a retail establishment, which it is doing, and it provides that the parking be maintained under the terms of that agreement as long as that store is operating. So uh, from a legal standpoint, I don't think there's anything we can do to uh, uh, put uh, some fuel to the fire under their feet to try to get them to respond. Uh, we're continuing to try to make contact with them and hope to get some response in the near future. But uh, I see Paulette has her hand up, and maybe she has some later update. Paulette, would you please come up? Thank you, Mayor and Common Council. Um, and Steve maybe didn't see it yet. At right around 5 o'clock, we did receive an email from the VP of Real Estate. And as I've mentioned before, um, they still seem very agreeable to the site plan. And the concept, they just had a couple, I think, a couple issues with, you know, working out some of the details. But I would say it was a positive email, and they are now responding back. Good. Thank you. Hold on, Paulette. Alma Clay, do you have a question for Paulette? Yes, thank you. Uh, I believe it's for you, Paulette. Um, under, on page 7, business development loans to redeveloper, um, under letter B, it says the city will make available to redeveloper a low-interest community development block grant loan in the amount of $200,000. It's a low-interest loan. Um, why do they need this help? Or is this something, you know, I, you know, is there some standard thing here? Why would they need $200,000 to? It was a part of the, the overall negotiations in the beginning where we talked about various loans and incentives. Um, it was an item that was discussed. They wanted to take advantage of that, and they do have to submit an application to the Redevelopment Authority just as any other business would, and it's linked to job creation for the low okay. to moderate income. Thank you, Alan McLeavis. Thank you. Thank you, Paulette. Okay, thank you. Oh. <clears throat> Attorney McLean. Uh, I won't belabor the details of the agreement, but just as an overview, you recall about a month ago had a uh, uh, basically a letter of intent before the council that was also approved by the Redevelopment Authority. Um, the terms of this agreement are uh, all in line with that letter of intent. There's nothing... Uh, odd that has happened in the meantime that has changed the deal in any event, in any manner. So it's basically uh, fleshing out that letter of intent, uh, setting forth the various contingencies, and there are a number of them, and uh, the various steps of the parties and so forth. So, uh, you also have uh, on your, I think we're on your desks uh, this evening, some of the additional attachments that are exhibits to the development agreement. Um, as previously mentioned, there, there's two loans, and so there's business loan agreements for each of those, and there's separate promissory note and separate uh, mortgage for, for those loans. So uh, if anyone has questions about the details, really now is the time to ask, I think. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Okay, we will call the roll. Please call the roll. Serta? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Clayunas, Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Rinfleisch, Ryan, Verhasselt, Wangaman, Boren, Aye. and Bauk. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 646 by Alderman Hanna, Boren, Bauk, Gisha, and Clayunas. Established in 2008 budget policy for departmental budget for the general fund, library fund, and the transit fund that maintains the same tax rate as the 2007 budget. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Can I um, 
make a resolution to put this upon its passage. Mo motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Rehasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. And Serta? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 647, 648 lies over. 649 to be referred. Report of committee seven, 650 by law and licensing, recommending denying beverage operators license number 7460 based on applicant's record of violations related to the licenses activity, the applicant's status as a habitual law violator and the applicant, applicant's failure to reveal all violations. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I move that the uh, report of committee be accepted and adopted. Motion and? Is there a second? Second. Second. Under discussion. Uh, under discussion, Mayor, is uh, Stephanie M. Garcia here tonight? She's not here, Your Honor. Thank you. Please proceed. Uh, we, uh, Law and Licensing Committee, uh, unanimously voted not to grant this license uh, based on her uh, 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 status as a habitual lie violator and the applicant's failure to reveal all violations. Okay. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Any other discussion? <coughs> there being none, please call the roll. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Man Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Serta? Aye. And Gesha? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 651 by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operators license number 7482 based on the applicant's record of violations related to the license activity and the applicant's failure to reveal all violations. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Motion and? Second. Second. Under discussion. Thank you, Your Honor. Is Samantha E. O'Neill here tonight? It's not here, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Please proceed. Uh, the uh, committee uh, law and licensing unanim unanimously recommended not granting this license for a record of violations re related to the license activity and the applicant's failure to reveal all violations. Thank you, Vice <laughs> President Bourne. Any further discussion? There be none. Please call the roll. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Serta? Aye. Gisha? Aye. And Hannah? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 652 by Motor Vehicle Review requesting a 30-day extension to completely study all associated effects to both the Motor Vehicle Fund and to the General Fund on the potential use of a portion of the Motor Vehicle Fund. President Hannah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I would... <clears throat> Make a motion to accept and adopt. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Yes, if I may. Please. Um, at this juncture, we're very close uh, with our recommendations. We have asked our investment banker to do some additional analysis for us, uh, which should be prepared in the next week or so, and then the committee can make some final recommendations. Very well. Thank you. Well, President Bo uh, Hannah, any further discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Mm. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunis. Aye. Manny. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Rinfleisch, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. Boren, Aye. Bauk, Aye. Serta, Aye. Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. and Heidemann. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 653 by a special short-term short table organization review committee requested an extension to July 16th, 2007 to complete its findings and submit its report to the Common Council. Mm -hmm. President Hannah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Trust me, I wish we were done here. Uh, I would make a motion to accept and adopt. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. I would just like to comment that uh, we're trying to be as comprehensive as possible in weighing all the alternatives and establishing a financial impact, and that takes quite a bit of information gathering. Yes, it does. And I, I would like to commend you, Alderman Hanna, President Hanna, for the hard work that you and the committee is doing. I know you've met rather frequently and dealt with some very uh, um, serious issues here. And uh, six weeks was a very uh, 
very uh, interesting uh, timetable, but uh, I think the additional time will allow you to, to, to complete the job that you, that you really want to do. So appreciate your efforts. Any other discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Serta? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. And Kittleson? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 654 and 55 to be referred. Report of Committee 8 by Finance regarding a transfer of, of appropriations in the 2007 budget and recommending obtaining minimum of three bids for the finance and or lease of three ambulances. President Hanna. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would make a motion to accept and to file uh, the resolution. Motion to accept and adopt and file resolution. Is there a second? Second. Second. Under discussion. Alderman Clay Excuse me, Your Honor, I think he said accept and adopt and he said accept and file. He, file resolution. Oh, okay. Accept and adopt the resolution. File. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Are we okay with that? Motion is to accept and adopt the report of committee and file the resolution. Okay, thank you. Oh, President Hanna, is that what this? That's okay? Thank you, Alderman Manny. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. My question is simply related to the dollar amounts that we'd be transferring. If we don't know yet whether we will be we will be buying or leasing, why do we choose that to transfer the total amount as if we were buying? Okay, I can hit on that a little bit, but we can ask uh, Mr. Gephardt to come up here too. Uh, Mr. Gephardt, it's a uh, I'll let, I'll let Mr. Gephardt explain. I guess first to clarify, the, the motion is to file the resolution, so right now we're, it, is, it is being filed. Uh, this resolution was amended, was, was in committee the whole previously. Um, a portion of it was taken out, and a portion of it was passed um, at that time when it came back to council. Um, but the, there was a dual referral and so resolution 14 went, went to the Finance Committee. Uh, so because it was a previously approved by Council, it's being filed now. However, after discussion with the Fire Department, um, there is a resolution coming back in for that portion tonight under other matters that we referred to Finance for further discussion. Uh, our concern is the first priority is to have the ambulances under contract for construction, and there's a very tight time frame on that. Uh, the best way to expedite that is to initially have it funded by the Motor Vehicle Fund and to put it under contract, and from that point on, then we can study the lease options and uh, what uh, lease organization would be, agency would be best to, to go with at that time. Uh, leasing is new to the city, so we would need some time to look into it and get an understanding of all the ramifications involved in it. Um, but this would expedite it so it's not held up so they will get the ambulances uh, delivered by December. Is, is the, will be the objective of the other resolution that's coming in under the other matters. Just when the, you, you hear that coming in, I don't want that to raise concerns because we're, this is being filed at this point. But then we'll discuss that in the Finance Committee and that will come back on your next meeting in July along with a proposed contract to order the ambulances. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gephardt. Alderman, uh, Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, now, by filing this, we're, we're, not, we're not doing away with the requirement for getting the three bids for the ambulances. Is that my understanding? Okay, so the only thing, the only thing we're filing tonight then are the previous documents for the $500,000 the three hundred thousand dollars in upfront costs have already been passed at a previous right. meeting. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, so we're not voting on that again. We're no. just okay. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President Boren. Alderman Rainflesh. Been take care of. Got it. Any more? <clears throat> any further discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Serta. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Heidemann, aye. Kittleson, aye. and Clyunas. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Ordinances introduced 10, 657, and 58. Lies over. 
659 and 660 to be referred. Matters laid over 11, 530, and RO, RO number 128708 by the City Plan Commission recommending amending the text of the zoning ordinance so as to change the notification for a public hearing on designation of historic structures and historic sites from owners of property within 200 feet of boundary to owners within 100 feet of the boundaries. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the RO be accepted and filed and the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second, under discussion. Um, thank you, Your Honor. I think Alderman Ryan has all the details on this. I do also, but he's been working on it in committee, so perhaps we want to hear from him. We've, uh, we've talked about this, but Alderman Ryan, would you like to just cap on that? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderperson Montemayor. Uh, this has been uh, uh, in uh, historic, the Historic Planning Commission for, for quite a while. Uh, what we're basically doing here is moving uh, the, the uh, uh, basically notification process was within 200 feet of any structure that was, uh, that elected to be deemed a historic structure. Uh, in some instances, per se, uh, Sheridan Park, uh, you were actually notifying people a block away. And uh, it, it made the notification process much more time consuming and much more costly for the city. Um, basically, uh, and any conditional use permits in the city, when one is issued, uh, the notification process is within 100 feet. So there's no sense in making this more stringent than that. And that was the, uh, the whole gist of this. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Ryan. Any more discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Serta? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Kleunis? Aye. And Manny? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 581, RO number 129708 by the city clerk submitting a communication from the executive director of Family, Family Resource Center of Sheboygan County advising that the Literacy Council and the Family Resource Center have agreed to merge effective July 1st, 2007 with the, with the programs and activities of the Literacy Council becoming a part of the Family Resource Centers of Sheboygan County, Inc. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would <clears throat> move to accept the RO and file. Second. Motion and second to accept and file under discussion. President Hanna. Yes, thank you. Um, you know, I've served many years on the on the board of United Way, and I'm still on the Allocations Committee. Uh, this is a wonderful situation in that the Literacy Councils and its programs will now continue uh, in a new partnership. So I think this is a very good thing for Sheboygan. Wonderful. Thank you. Anything else? There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 552. RO number 32708 by Alderman Hanna, Boren, Clayunas, Bauk, and Gisha, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2007 budget. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would place this resolution upon his passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Serta? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah, Aye. Heidemann, Aye. Kittleson, Clayunis, Manny, Aye. and Meyer. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 525 RC number 560708 by Public Works recommending authorizing entry into a contract for the 2007 by Tuminus resurfacing program and passing the substitute resolution. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted and that the substitute resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Serta. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunis. Aye. Manny. Aye. And Meyer. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 563, General Ordinance Number 120708 by Alderman Verhassel, Montemayor, Heidemann, Gisha, and Meyer, amending the code so as to include changes to the TO, Department of Public Works, Director of Public Works. Alderman Verhassel. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion to put this ordinance upon its passage. Second. 
Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Serta? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Kleunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. And Montemayor? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law 661 will be referred to Committee of the Whole. 662 will be referred to Special Committee on Risk Management. Other matters, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, 663 is a resolution to authorize the transfer of appropriations in the 2007 budget. It will go to finance. 664 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2008 and June 30, 2009. And that will be referred to law, law and licensing. 665 is a communication from Sandy Hickman strongly opposing the new proposed Walgreens to be located at North Avenue and Calumet Drive because it's a 24-hour store with trucks making deliveries all hours of the day and night and it will cause a major disturbance to the neighbors. And that will be referred to the City Plan Commission. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion and second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? We stand adjourned. Thank you.